Greetings and salutations everybody and welcome back to my channel! Woo! So I hope you enjoyed last week's uh, throwback video. I was feeling under the weather, I was still like, it was cold, I was tired of recording in the freezing cold, and I found that video left over from my trip to Singapore, and I thought it'd be a really good idea to uh, probably get that done right about now, before it's been a year since I went. So I did that, that was a lot of fun. I actually enjoyed looking at it. Like it was very relaxing for myself. I felt like I was back on vacation and I just felt better. Um, now this week, my piercing is finally doing better. This side is almost completely healed. I'm so happy. It's getting warmer, but I'm still, my heater is right here. I have another heater right here. I'm probably gonna turn it on later because this side is freezing. But I'm doing better and I'm ready to be back on camera. Uh, but before I continue, please don't forget to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button if you hadn't hit it already. I have like great friends, great viewers already. But if you're not subscribed, I don't know why you're not subscribed. I will be putting out videos. At this rate, I'm doing two videos a week, which is a bit much for me, honestly. But I'm going to try to keep it up. And subscribe and look forward to more videos. Yeah, subscribe now. Thank you. Okay, bye. This time, I have that I actually get asked a lot in person. Nobody knows me on the internet, so they don't ask me on the internet. I actually like going out, as you saw in one of my last videos. I like going out, I like meeting new people. And one of the things that I hear the most often when meeting new Japanese people and meeting new non-Japanese people, but especially when meeting new Japanese people for the first time, the first thing I hear is, <laughs> That is the first thing. And I don't know why it shocks people so much. I, so much. I've met quite a few long-termers that have been in the Kansai area. They speak perfectly beautiful Kansai bin. It's not unheard of to learn the dialect of the area you live in. But for whatever reason, it surprises people. It surprises people. It confuses them for a second. The next question is usually, "Are you half Japanese?" Which no, not. Uh, I just picked up the language in living here for eight years. So, when, when I talk to Japanese people, that's what they ask me. When I talk to non-Japanese people, the thing that they ask me the most is, how did you get so good at speaking Kansai Bin? And unfortunately, my Kansai Bin is kind of the result of a lot of like random variables that you can't really recreate. I ended up marrying a person from the Kansai area. I lived with his family, his parents, both of which are from Osaka, South Osaka. So they have very thick Osaka accents. And I spent half of my first year in Japan living with them. So I was fully immersed in the Kansai dialect for the first six months of my life here in Japan. Along with being married to a guy that speaks Kansai Bin. Um, working and living only in Kansai Bin, uh, in the Kansai area. Like, it doesn't happen very often. So I just happened to pick up the, the Kansai accent. But I think I have some tips for people who maybe aren't going through similar circumstances that want to get good at the Kansai dialect. They want to know how they can improve their Kansai dialect. I think I have some tips for you. So please check it out and let me know if it helps. Or if you need more information, just ask me and I will be more than happy to help you out. So the first tip I have for anyone that wants to learn the Kansai dialect specifically is do not study Japanese in college. I don't know, like, I'm not 100% on this tip. I just, in my experience, as someone that almost started studying Japanese in college, but I, I left my college after the first semester. I have cats. If you hear any random meowing, it's the cats. There's two of them today, and they're fighting over in the corner because that's what they like to do. It's friendly fights. Anyway, after I graduated high school, I got accepted into the University of Maryland College Park into their Japanese major program and I was going to study Japanese there. Um, but after my first semester, I realized that the whole uh, four-year college plan was not something I was like on board with. Like I didn't like the idea of having to take so many uh, unrelated classes. I was not interested in taking calculus. I did not understand why I had to take dance theories because you needed this credit in like the arts. But the only thing you could take was like some, it was like basic music. And it, it wasn't even like music theory because I think I would have taken music theory. 
But for some, for whatever reason, the semester I started, they only had dance theory available. So I had to take dance theory that semester. I had to take freshman English again, even though I took the AP course for English, so I shouldn't have had to, but my score wasn't high enough, so whatever. I took Japanese 102 because I passed their, uh, like, I started in the winter semester, winter, spring semester, so um, I was starting the second half of that year, and but I took the test to get into 102. And then I also took Japanese linguistics, which is actually a third year course, but uh, a lot of my friends were, it's like a second or third year course, I think, and a lot of my friends were in it, so I convinced the, um, I think he was the advisor for the Japanese program or something, or my friends convinced them to let me in which was, that was, I don't know why we did that. Be quiet! <laughs> they are really like trying. Why are you guys fighting over here? Go somewhere. I dropped, anyway, long story short, I dropped out of the Japanese course. I went to a, a technical school for animation because that was the cheapest art school in my state area. Um, so I didn't study any Japanese during my college years except for the self-study that I did myself. And I think not studying college Japanese helped me pick up Kansai Bin more quickly because I wasn't already working from a pre-established Japanese accent. If you go to college for Japanese, you are going to learn Hyojungo, which is standard Japanese, which is the Tokyo dialect. That is the only thing that they teach in college. It's the only thing they taught at um, College Park. Maybe there are like elective courses for dialects. I don't know. I have no idea. But as far as like learning Japanese in college, you will be learning Hyojun Go. You will not be learning Kansai Bin. No, after practicing four years of Hyojun Go, it's gonna be really hard to suddenly switch the entire way you speak to Kansai Bin because Basically, the Kansai dialect is an inverted version of the Tokyo dialect, or you could say the Tokyo dialect is an inverted version of the Kansai dialect, since historically, Kansai dialect is older. It was the standard Japanese up until the Edo period, I believe. Kansai dialect was standard Japanese. It will be kind of, I think, starting, if you're starting from college and then trying to pick up Kansai, you're gonna have a tough time because you're basically gonna have to switch up the entire way you speak. So if for whatever reason you you don't go hardcore into Japanese in college, you might have a better time picking up your Kansai here in Kansai. The next thing that I would recommend, so if you're not, like I said, if you're not taking Japanese courses, you will be tempted to just use uh, Japanese media to learn your Japanese. Unfortunately, this won't work for the Kansai dialect because Japanese media uses the Tokyo dialect for basically everything. Movies, uh, TV shows, games, news broadcasts, uh, films, they all generally use the Tokyo dialect unless it's a series or movies set specifically in the Kansai area or a character that's from the Kansai area you're not going to hear the uh, Kansai dialect so much. So it's not really gonna help you learn Kansai bin. Also, the language, the way um, the Japanese language is used in media, you only really hear a set. You, do you see them? What? You guys are so distracting! Ugh, I give up, I give up. Anyway, I feel like Japanese media like media Japanese, the Japanese that you hear in commercials, TVs, TV shows, movies, games, um, animation, this Japanese pulls from like, it's TV Japanese. So they're not really using words that normal people would use when they speak. Everyone speaks like a character. Even if it's a TV program, even if it's a variety TV show, the people on that variety show are picked out to play a certain character within that TV variety program, so either they're the cute girl, or they're the really serious guy, or they're the really funny, dorky guy. Like, everyone is there because they fit into these pre-existing, uh, like, tropes. And so the way they speak will reflect these tropes. The cute girl is typically gonna be like, Ah, kawaii! That's the guy! Like, she's gonna speak like that the entire time. And so, while these 
kinds, this media is really good for listening. It's excellent for listening practice. Um, you will find that your listening skill advances very quickly if you're watching or listening to Japanese media. As far, in terms of speaking, you will start sounding like a character. You're not gonna sound like a normal Japanese person. Like, Japanese people do say, ah, sugoi! Like, that's a thing Japanese people say. But I guess it, it can sound a little fake, I think is the thing. It can come off a little bit. I just had to pull a cat out of my microwave that's on top of my refrigerator. Ayana, come get your cat. So essentially, if you're copying TV show Japanese, you're going to mimic the way words are pronounced in TV shows. Imagine if a Japanese person mimicked the way that the characters on the Big Bang Theory spoke, but in like daily conversation. Imagine a Japanese person talking like Sheldon because he loves the Big Bang TV show, he likes English, and he's like, yeah, I'm gonna watch it to practice English, and he ends up just speaking like Sheldon because he thinks that's what English sounds like. Like that's, do you, do you get what I'm trying to say? Imagine a Japanese person speaking to you like a character from a TV sitcom. We know what TV sitcoms sound like in English. It's, it's English and it's conversational English, but it's not necessarily natural. And that is what you're gonna end up sounding like um, if you try to learn your Japanese from Japanese media. You will end up sounding like a character from a program, which is funny. I'm sure a lot of people will be like, ha, ah, sugo, nihongo jōzu. Like, they're gonna say, oh, your Japanese is great. But, like, I'm sure many of people, many people have told you on the internet, don't take all of these compliments at their, like, face value. That is just, it's tate mai. It's how Japanese people interact. Take it with a grain of salt. You know, just don't look, don't look too deeply into it. I would definitely recommend you do not try to mimic the speaking styles in Japanese media, but for listening practice, it is perfectly awesome. Do that. So far, I've only told you like things not to do to, for the Kansai accent, which is a kind of maybe a kind of pessimistic way to start off this list. Sorry about that. But I really think it's important that you, if you're really trying to speak the Kansai dialect, like don't try to like stick it on top of your standard Japanese dialect because it sounds weird and fake. The most important thing you can do to uh, get the Kansai accent to speak with the Kansai dialect is to move to the Kansai area. <laughs> like that's, you have to do, you're gonna have to do that. You cannot possibly move anywhere else in Japan and expect to somehow still pick up the Kansai dialect, it's gonna be really hard. And people in that area are probably gonna look at you weird because A, you're not gonna be speaking Kansai correctly, and B, no one in that area is gonna be speaking that dialect either, so they're just gonna be like, well, did you live in Kansai? And then you're gonna be like, no, I didn't. And then they're gonna be like, why are you, what, why? And they're just gonna be confused. They'll be like amazed, but also mostly confused, I think. So, move to the Kansai area. Another thing you can do is speak to people from the Kansai area. If you can't move there right away, try to make friends with Japanese people that are from the Kansai area. I'm sure they study abroad. I'm sure they're at college campuses all over the world. And Kansai people, even when they leave the Kansai area, they tend to maintain their accents. Uh, I, I don't know how many of you guys know, but uh, in Japan, a lot of people go to Tokyo for becoming like a famous actress, musician, or whatever, or they go to Tokyo to go to school, they go to Tokyo for work, whatever, they go to Tokyo. People, when they go to Tokyo, they tend to lose whatever their original, uh, like, a local accent was. For example, a person from Aomori, which is way in the northern Tohoku, I think it's the Tohoku region of Japan, there is an there is an Aomori accent. There is an Aomori dialect, but people that go from Aomori to Tokyo tend to lose that accent and they tend to adopt the Tokyo accent. While people from the Kansai area, even if they go to Tokyo, they tend to keep their their Kansai accent because it's like a, a point of pride for them. They're really proud of it and they are, the Kansai accent is also really well known throughout Japan. And you know, it's a point of pride for them. So they, t they tend to hold on to it. So if you meet a Kansai person, you could probably pick up some Kansai dialect 
by speaking to that person. So you could move to Kansai, speak to people, talk to people from the Kansai area. Also marrying, uh, like I did, someone from the Kansai area, marrying or dating someone from the Kansai area is a great way. Obviously this is part of, like, it's one of the d many things you can do. I guess I could have divided it into like three separate things. I feel like these fit into the same general idea of basically communicating with people <laughs> from the Kansai area in some way, either by living there or by talking to them or by dating, marrying them. Obviously, uh, I think one thing you should realize if you do end up dating or marrying a person from the Kansai area is that uh, you tend to mimic the speech patterns of the person that you're dating. So for a guy dating a girl, you may end up mimicking her speech patterns. And since, be and since Japanese is quite a gendered language, speech patterns can vary if it's a girl saying it or a guy saying it. For example, oh, I don't know for the Kansai dialect, but in the Tokyo dialect, I think women use wa at the end of their sentences, so they'll be like, Ureshi wa. And this is like a, a, fi, a thing that women will usually say, um, while guys might say, Ureshi yo ne. So, you know, like the way the word ends depends on like whether you're a guy or a girl. So, if you're learning Japanese from your significant other, you may mimic the speech patterns that they have, which can be associated with certain genders. That doesn't bother me, but that may bother some people that may, if you're a person that doesn't want to come off as effeminate and you speak Japanese effeminately, people might, they, they, they might be confused, but if you say you're dating a Japanese person, they'll be like, okay, I get it. It'll, it's the same for if you're learning Kansai Bin. So as a result, my Kansai Bin accent comes off a little aggressive. Uh, even Shota, <laughs> when I speak to him, Sometimes he's like, why are you yelling? Like, why are you so mad at me? And I'm like, I'm just mimicking the way that you you speak. Like, this is how you speak to me. And he's probably like, holy shit, woman. <laughs> Original, uh, like, a local accent was, for example, a person from Aomori, which is way in the northern Tohoku, I think it's the Tohoku region of Japan. There is an, there is an Aomori accent. There is an Aomori dialect, but people, that go from Aomori to Tokyo tend to lose that accent and they tend to adopt the Tokyo accent. While people from the Kansai area, even if they go to Tokyo, they tend to keep their, their Kansai accent because it's like a point of pride for them. They're really proud of it and they are, the Kansai accent is also really well known throughout Japan. And you know, it's a point of pride for them. So they, t they tend to hold on to it. So if you meet a Kansai person, you could probably pick up some Kansai dialect by speaking to that person. Yeah, if, you're, if you do end up learning your Japanese from your significant other, you will probably mimic their speech patterns just the way they say it, which could make you come off sounding more effeminate or more masculine. If that doesn't bother you, that's fine. But if that bothers you, that's something that you should consider before you do that. I don't know, you, it's not really a choice. <laughs> In most cases, people aren't like willingly choosing. They just end up with that person, so that's how it is. But if that's something that bothers you and it's something you should worry about, do do worry about it. My final uh, recommendation, which I, I feel bad about saying now that I said don't watch TV shows, but I really think that you should watch a variety TV show programs Specifically, variety programs produced by uh, television networks that are based in the Kansai area. So that'll be MBS, Yomiuri, and Kansai TV, which I believe is also connected to like Nitele, which is, Nitele is like the Tokyo version, I think. I'm, I'm not like, like they, they either share, like they're based in Kansai, but they share programming with that like Tokyo branch. But anyway, they produce their own programs, and these programs that are produced in Kansai feature uh, Geinojin and talents that are usually from the Kansai area. So by watching these programs, you really get a chance to hear what a more 
even though it's TV Japanese, it's still kind of, because it's not like high quality, it's not like television drama TV Japanese, it's just kind of like local variety program, local announcer Japanese, so I think you get a better chance of hearing, even though you can't hear from a, a regular native, you can hear the Kansai accent um, in its more natural form. And it's, that'll be great listening practice, especially for the Kansai dialect, especially if you watch comedy programs, because in comedy programs they speak very quickly and they speak in Kansai men. So listening to those kinds of programs will really get you ready to listen for the con listen like in the in the Kansai accent. <laughs> It'll get you used to listening to Kansai men. Watching those programs, they'll get you used to listening to the Kansai accent. They'll get you used to listening to it quickly. Um, and even though you can't really practice it for mimicking because I doubt you're ever going to be giving like a stand-up set, but it will, it's about as close as you can get aside, outside of going to Japan or talking to a Japanese person. I, I hate to be the bearer of like bad news, but the Kansai accent is pretty hard to learn, even if, even for natives, even for Japanese people. Um, you know, a lot of actors, if they're cast to play a person that's from the Kansai area, they're expected to speak Kansai dialect, but Kansai people can easily tell when that person is not from Kansai because their pronunciation sounds weird. So it's, it's not going to be an easy task by any means, and the only thing I can really uh, suggest that you do is try to create an environment by moving or being around people that speak the Kansai dialect and watching programming from the Kansai area. Um, I believe actually some of the Kansai networks, you can stream their content online. So try streaming. Um, you could probably find YouTubers from the Kansai area. I don't know any personally because I do not watch basically anything on Japanese YouTube. All of the YouTube stuff that I watch is usually movie related or black YouTube or gaming related, so I know nothing about Japanese YouTube, sorry. But I'm sure if you search like Kansai Bin, how to speak like in Japanese, you could find plenty of Japanese people from the Kansai area that will try to teach you uh, Kansai Bin. So yeah, don't like, yeah, <laughs> I feel bad for giving you like two don'ts and then two do that you can maybe kind of do. The streaming content from Kansai area TV programs and Searching for Kansai YouTubers is probably your best choice, and then move to Kansai as soon as you can. Okay, so finally there are a few things that I just want you to remember in your journey to discovering your Kansai dialect. The first thing, the Kansai dialect is actually the name for a collection of dialects spoken in the Kansai region of Japan. As you know, the Kansai region of Japan includes Osaka, Hyogo, Wakayama, Nara, Kyoto, Shiga, and I maybe Okayama, but I think Okayama is part of Chugoku. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I think it stops at Hyogo, and technically the Kansai area goes as far as Nara, though people in the northern part of Mie Prefecture consider themselves Kansai people and they speak in the Kansai dialect. So within this very large region there are several different kinds of dialects that fall under the Kansai dialect. For example, there is Kawachi Bin which is spoken in the southern Osaka prefecture. There is the there's Kishu Bin which is spoken in Wakayama. There is Nara Bin. There is Mie Bin. There is the Kyoto dialect, but within the Kyoto dialect, I believe it's broken down by certain cities that have a stronger dialect as compared when compared to other cities within Kyoto. So even though there is a kind of generic Kansai dialect, within that dialect there are more specific dialects. So that's another issue you might, you might have if you're trying to learn the Kansai dialect and you're not in Kansai. You may start picking up parts of the Kansai dialect that actually come from completely different dialects. You might start picking up some parts from like a Kyoto dialect and then like smashing it together with a Wakayama dialect and then a part like ending it all with an Osaka dialect, which would be funny and I'm sure people would get a kick out of that, but it would not sound really much like Kansai Ben. It would sound like someone who is trying to do 
do something with Kansai Ben. Luckily, a lot of young people do not speak some of the more uh, obscure dialects in the Kansai area. A lot of young people tend to speak a more generic Kansai Ben, which is closely related to Osaka Ben, which not the Kawachi Ben, but more the Osaka City dialect, which is the Yang Ya. The wakara hens with the hens. You can also say with hen. I've heard people say hen or hen. Um, for example, when you say I don't know in the Kansai dialect, I think in the Tokyo di dialect it's wakara nai, wakara nai. I don't, I don't know how to say it. Please don't laugh at my Tokyo dialect. I tried to speak Tokyo dialect to some of my friends from Tokyo, and they laughed at me. <gasps> But uh, I think in Tokyo I like you to say wakaranai, wakaranai, wakaranai. I don't know. Um, but in Kansai dialect we say wakarahen, wakarahen, wakarang. We also say wakarang, which is wakaratan. Um, so, and I couldn't tell you which dialect those sounds are taken from. For me, I think it's the Os. It sounds like the Osaka dialect to me. All of the people that I know from Osaka speak this way. But also people from Kyoto speak this way and then they also have certain like verb endings like I think in Kyoto they use haru. That's either Kyoto that it, it, it. But they I've also heard that in Osaka too. So like I'm confused and I live here. So I can't even imagine someone not living here trying to pick up the, the Kansai dialect and not being confused. Just know that within Kansai dialect there are several other dialects. So maybe aim for that Osaka dialect is the easiest thing you can do. <laughs> Another thing I would like for you to remember if you're trying to work on your Kansai dialect is that the Kansai dialect is very expressive. I think it's like a bajillion times more expressive than the Tokyo dialect. So if you're if you're trying to speak the Kansai dialect, um, just remember like the nori. Nori means to like, the, it's like the rhythm. Kansai people are often described as very nori nori, which means they, they like, they're very uh, expressive, they're very like, um, this is like, you like nori, like this is like, you're like, you, you, you noru. <laughs> like I can't, I can't explain it very well, I'm so sorry. But typically, uh, people from the Kansai area are very talkative, they're tint, they are described by people from other parts of Japan as very loud, they can be a little bit in your face, they apparently, according to one TV program I watched, they complain a lot. <laughs> they, a lot of actually negative stereotypes are associated with the Kansai dialect and Kansai people, but in my experience, living here and speaking the dialect, it's very friendly. It's way more friendly and approachable than the Tokyo dialect. So I feel more comfortable speaking to other people from the Kansai area. Um, I almost never worry about whether I'm like speaking Jap Japanese like properly. I just enjoy speaking to them. And I think that's the really nice thing about the Kansai dialect is like it's like you just speak it and they understand you. And there's that moment where they just be like, you speak my language, not the Japanese language, the Osakan language. And that's really, that's really beautiful. So just remember to be ex as expressive as, as your natural self is when you speak the, the Osaka dialect. Um, if you're not that expressive, if you're not that outgoing of a person when you talk to people, um, I'm not saying that you can't learn the Kansai dialect because obviously there are people from the Kansai area that are not that like outgoing or crazy. Um, it just might be harder for you to get the rhythm of the Kansai dialect because it is so expressive, you know? So maybe if you're like a, a nori nori person, you get you get on stuff like easily. It'll be easier for you to do as opposed to someone who's a bit more stiff. The Tokyo dialect actually might work out better for you. So yeah, in that case, just stick to the Tokyo dialect. I don't think anyone's ever gonna judge you. They're never gonna be like, oh my god, I can't believe you're speaking the Tokyo dialect in like Kansai Japan. They don't care what dialect you speak. They just like talking to you. So you'll be fine. Whatever you speak, you'll be fine. So that is all of my advice for learning Kansai Ben. Um, I didn't want to speak, use a lot of Kansai Ben in this video only because when I try to teach people how to say things in Kansai Ben, while not like naturally speaking it, I think my accent tends to flip more towards whatever the 
Kyojungo pronunciation is or it gets mashed up in between the two because like I said I did not I have no formal Japanese language uh, education but I do watch a lot of news and I recently especially recently I've been mimicking subconsciously um, the accent used in news so I've been saying a lot of Janai and Janai and Janai like lots of Janais and it's been bothering me because I would much rather say Chao which is what they say in the Kansai area instead of Janai so instead of saying not that which is Are Janai we in Kansai we would say Are Chao wa Are Chao ne Chao 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 <laughs> so yeah, I'm kind of, I've been like losing my, my Kansai accent in certain areas, so I'm not so confident about speaking it while speaking English, but I will be putting together some videos in Japanese uh, of my trip from America, kind of like the one video I did of Bush Gardens. I have, a, I think, a couple other ones, museum type thing. Anyway, I'll be speaking Japanese in them, and because I can only speak what I know, which is mostly just Kansai dialect, those videos will be in Kansai dialect, so if you're interested in hearing my really crappy Kansai dialect, please look out for those videos. Um, please comment if you have any questions or anything. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Uh, don't forget to have fun. Don't forget to enjoy your life. Don't forget to drink water. Water is important and I've been breaking out. so. Hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys later this week with another video. Yeah. So, bye.